Hey, welcome to the shop. So today we're doing a little fabrication project on this vintage go-kart. I'm really excited about this one because it incorporates some digital fabrication with a CO2 laser cutter. Now this isn't a laser that'll cut metal, it cuts woods and plastics, but that's gonna be really useful for creating prototypes and today for creating a sheet metal forming die. Well, let me show you what part we're making. So this right here is the torque converter and it's on the engine and it changes the gear ratio like a transmission between the engine and the wheels. And it's a common device that you'll see in snowmobiles, side-by-sides, ATVs, and on go-karts. I don't want to leave it exposed, but even more than that, I don't want to put on this plastic cover that just doesn't really go with the vintage style look. So I'm going to make my own that's going to have expanded metal so it'll still be visible, but protected. Let's take a look at the laser cutter we're going to use and then go ahead and make up this forming die to build this part. This is the X-Tool P2 CO2 laser cutter. They sent it out to me to be able to evaluate and use on some videos. Let me give you a quick rundown on what it took to set this thing up. And then at the end of the video, I'll go in a lot more depth about the laser cutter for those who are interested. It just shipped here UPS in a standard box and it was packed pretty well. I needed to create some space, so I cleared off this workbench. And while it's not heavy, it's definitely a good idea to have a second person help lift it. All I needed to do was add some of the included coolant and it's ready to go. At the end of the video, I'll put some more details about the setup and my first impressions of the machine. Right now, let's get back to building that shroud. My first challenge here is gonna be measuring this to be able to get an accurate read on the profile around the outside that I'm trying to hit. Because I can laser cut this out of an inexpensive material to test fit, I'm okay to make some assumptions. So I'm just assuming that I have two different circles with different diameters that I measured and a spacing between them. In order to create the forming die, I'm gonna use some quarter inch thick plywood here. Now this machine is rated to cut quite a bit thicker than quarter inch, but I think it should work pretty well to just have a few different layers of the quarter inch with some spacers in between to be able to bend the whole thing around. There's a camera inside the machine to make it easy to locate the actual cut pattern on your piece. And there's even a second camera that'll give a close-up view uh, right off the gantry to give a little bit more precise positioning. That's about it. I'm using the standard recommended settings for the machine and let's see how it cuts. Cutting is going smoothly and the fume extraction seems to be working pretty well. I'd expect everything to work well with the cost of a machine like this. You know, this is more their professional version, but uh, the results are what you'd expect them to be. Now my measurements on the diameters appeared to be good, but on the length, I uh, mistyped one of the numbers and I was off by an inch. So I made an adjustment there. You can see that extra line cut in the center. This time I left a reference line in to see if it would cut that different line style and it did. I just was curious about the inside diameter. I set them to be 260 thou, and it looks like I'm over by about five thou with a caliper measurement on a wooden inside diameter. I'll take that any day. Now I am going to line these three pieces up like this, and I need something to space out between them. You might be wondering, couldn't I just cut these out with the jigsaw and saved a lot of hassle and a lot of costs on a laser cutter like this? And you definitely could do that. I'm really just using a simple example to be able to test this process out and see if it might work to make some things that are more complicated while at the same time testing out that machine. For the spacers, I want to try cutting some half inch thick plywood. This is half inch birch plywood. And I just drew up the size of the spacer directly in the laser cutting software without using CAD, and that worked pretty well. The settings I picked for this were for half inch cherry plywood, which I assume is gonna be pretty similar, but I could be off a little bit on that. It took three passes at a much slower speed. All right, so it made it through this half inch birch plywood, all right? Um, the edges on this, Let's see if you can see that are pretty charred right there. And I don't know if that has more to do with my settings that I wasn't quite sure exactly what material to set it for. So that may be able to get a little bit better. Maybe that's just the nature of cutting something this thick with a desktop laser. I'm not sure. If you have some experience with that, let me know in the comments. The assembly is pretty straightforward, just using those holes for alignment. And that's one of the nice things about uh, digital fabrication is you can put these little alignment features in. The forming buck is ready and we can give it a try to form that round shroud. I'm not sure how this is going to go. 
I need to cut the expanded metal down to size, and a plasma cutter is a great tool to do that. I always love seeing the expanded metal cut with the plasma cutter. I think it's super cool how it switches between the pilot arc and then back to the uh, full arc. Notice how I located the cut so I wouldn't have anything poking out. Now there are always a few burrs and it's a good idea to clean up the edges. I'm just doing that here on the 2x48 and then I can start forming this around. I haven't done anything like this before so I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. And I started off by taking bulk moves but then I got smarter and I looked at the form and then went around row by row to see how much I needed to bend each one. And by working with this for a little while, I got something that fit pretty well. Because of the close proximity of the brake rotor to the torque converter, I had to pull the engine off and turn it sideways to be able to test fit it. It looks like it fits on really well and I was expecting to make some mounts for the inside, but in fact the holes for it actually line up with some of the expanded metal, so I think I'll be able to just hold it on with some screws and washers directly. At least I'm going to try that at first. I drew up a side plate that I'm cutting out here on the plasma table and this is going to be a little bit oversized so that I can uh, match fit it directly to what I ended up with on the form. Because of that I'll start off by putting a few little tack welds just on the inside to be able to hold the two together so that I can trim the outside. With a few tack welds in place, I can take it over to the 2x48 and just uh, trim a little bit off of the sides. I didn't leave a lot of material proud when I designed it, just enough to get a nice fit, have everything matched up really well to weld it. Now here, I'm welding the edge of this 18 gauge sheet metal right to those little wires, so it took a little bit of figuring out to get uh, dialed in how to do that. I'm using a pulse on this to be able to get the good penetration that I need while still controlling heat input. And as always, by the time I got to the second side, I'd kind of figured out how to do this and it started going along pretty well and things were laying in really consistently. I'll just clean up the edges a little bit with a grinder here to get everything to sit nicely and make it uh, have a nice polished look. I'm going to end up powder coating this in the end, I think, but uh, we'll test fit it for now. With this hanging back here, it reminds me of my days working on Volkswagens with fan belt covers. The reason I have holes in this with part of the pulleys sticking through is there isn't clearance with the brake rotor to be able to cover the whole pulley with the one shroud. So I had to create those holes to be able to fit this on there and protect that belt while still leaving clearance for the brake rotor. I'm happy with how it turned out and the styling is definitely more in line with a vintage cart than that plastic piece that came with the original torque converter. So I think that the concept works. I have several other things I want to try out with this laser. Um, some of them are plasma cutting templates made out of wood for when I need to cut a hole in something existing or things like that. Also some different jig and fixture ideas and maybe even some forming dies to emboss sheet metal. If you have some other ideas of how we might be able to use this laser for different fabrication projects, let me know down in the comments. For the last three minutes of the video, I'm going to go over some of my first impressions and a miniature review on this laser cutter. Now, I haven't tried all the different laser cutters in this category, so I can just tell you what I noticed about this particular one. Inside, it came with everything that you'd need, including some materials to be able to test out. Some cardboard, plywood, as well as a few pieces of acrylic. One of the unique features on this is this drawer that slides out, allowing you to put different accessories underneath to be able to uh, cut straight through. The manual and quick start guide were pretty thorough and easy to follow, very pictorial, uh, not a whole ton of text to have to follow. Here in the back of the machine there's the laser tube, and that laser bounces off some different mirrors to actually reach your material rather than moving the laser itself around. 
Now with the CO2 laser, the length of that laser tube indicates the power that it has, and this one in particular is a 55 watt CO2 laser. The laser tube is liquid cooled and it's nice in this machine that the whole cooling system is actually integrated into the machine so you don't have to have a separate chiller or anything like that. It includes antifreeze coolant to mix with water and add right to the machine. On the back there's also a fume port and the fume extraction is integrated into this. For right now I've just set it up with a hose to the outside but I'll probably come up with a better solution for that. The outside is made of plastic, all of these different covers, but the actual frame and everything is metal. It seems to work really well, the movement is nice, and it has a Z-axis here to automatically focus, as well as an air assist with a built-in compressor. That's really nice to have. Now, it has removable slats here on the bottom to be able to cut on. Another cool feature, you can see that uh, laser dot inside. I'm pretty sure that's part of the thickness measurement. It can measure the thickness of material for you. Here's another look at the camera that can help you locate your cut file relative to your workpiece, as well as the second camera that moves around on the gantry to get a really precise location. Now here's real-time cut speed on cardboard, and it's working really well. It's nice that the door locks and has interlocks so that it can't open while it's actually running. You can hear that this thing does make a bit of sound. Uh, it's not crazy loud, I'm talking right next to it, but it has an air compressor for the air assist, it has the fume extraction fan, as well as a fan for the electronics. So it's not totally quiet if that's what you're looking for. So at the end of the day, I really can't uh, give you a good comparison from first-hand experience with everything else on the market because I haven't used them all, but it was able to flawlessly handle every task that I threw at it, which you'd expect it to with the premium price tag that it has. Hey, well, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below, and we'll see you next time.